Charlie Pride is a country music legend, a legend who sadly passed away Saturday, December 12th at the age of 86. Pride passed away due to complications with COVID-19. The singer was a highly awarded artist, taking home a noteworthy amount of CMA, ACM, and Grammy Awards. And it was during the 2020 CMA Awards where fans watched what would end up being the singer's final performance, a performance so many will now cherish. I'm Addison Haker for Taste of Country, and while Pride did attend the CMA Awards this year, this wasn't the first time he's graced the award stage. In fact, he's had a long history with the CMAs. So get ready because we're bringing in Taste of Country's Billy Dukes to enlighten us on some Charlie Pride and CMA past. Hey Billy, glad you're here. Hey Addison. Okay, I'm going to get straight into the questions. So the first one I have for you is, was his 2020 CMA Awards performance truly his final performance? It was. It was really the last time that anyone would see Charlie publicly. He did some Q&A with reporters after the show and was a really kind of charming, humble mess as he tried to talk about his performance and thank all the people. I get some kind of, you know, it's not like on stage, I'm as comfortable as I can be, but uh, I enjoyed it, I, I, but mostly too I enjoyed being around some singers I've been around and some of my peers for so long, like uh, you know Mickey Gilly and Johnny, Johnny, Johnny. Uh, I can't even think of his name right now. See, and we we worked together a lot. Uh, Johnny Lee, that's who I was trying to say. But it's wonderful, and I course I've met this guy. This is a you talk about sharp. This is a sharp. <laughs> I would when I was his age, I wasn't that sharp. <laughs> hey, I stole it from you. Of course, that's Jimmy Allen next to him. They sang Kiss an Angel Good Morning during the show. He won the CMA's Willie Nelson Lifetime Achievement Award that night. Why? That's a really good question because there just simply wasn't enough time to get into the spread of his relationship with the CMA's. As a country singer, he was a groundbreaking artist, really country music's first and to this point only black superstar and one of just two black artists in the Country Music Hall of Fame, but to the CMAs, as an on-screen show, he was as reliable on television as anyone, having performed first in 1970. Then again in 71, 75, 1980, the year 2000, uh, he performed during the 50th anniversary show, and of course again in 2020. Those are just the performances that we could find. And he hosted too, right? He did host, yeah, good call on that one, Addison. He hosted in 1975 at the ninth annual CMA Awards. Glenn Campbell co-hosted with him. Musically, by my ear, Glenn was probably the closest sonically to Charlie from that era, but I'll be honest and admit, I'm hardly the expert when it comes to 70s country music. No worries, I'll put that video of his top songs in the corner for people. Immediately after Charlie's death, social media lit up with claims that Charlie caught COVID at last month's CMA Awards. Is there any truth to that? We don't know where Charlie caught the coronavirus, but the CMAs have put out a statement reinforcing how strict they were about COVID protocols and letting people know that he tested negative multiple times after the November 11th show in Nashville. Here's the full statement here and you can read it. You'll see it says on behalf of representatives of Pride's as well, but no one from Pride's team has backed that up with something similar on social media or even a press release. I think that's a bit of a problem in terms of perception for the CMAs. But, on the other hand, if you do the math on this, it really seems far less than likely that he contracted it there. On Facebook, Charlie's family revealed that he was hospitalized in late November, so even if his negative tests were false negatives because of known issues with the rapid testing, that puts him on the fringe of that two-week window. However, multiple false negatives seems less likely. Most, but certainly not all of the reporting on rapid testing problems are about false positives. Often what happens here is with false negatives, someone is showing some symptoms but they get tested a little too soon after contracting the virus. So in addition to the, f the rapid test, a molecular test is done just in case. I know all this because my family kind of just went through it all, but I also did some uh, research on ProPublica and a few other medical websites to confirm this information. So while the CMA's messaging could be a little more sensitive and even helpful, there are far, far, far too many opportunities for someone to catch coronavirus right now to say that with any sort of confidence, it happened in Nashville. Charlie 
lived in Texas, which is a state that is spiking in a major way, just like the rest of the country. And really, it might be stretching to assume that he was among that group of sort of lock it down, mask it up at all time people. He did agree to fly or, or drive to Nashville to be part of this show, and the show involved dozens of other people in the same room. If he was on the real conservative end of this thing, he probably wouldn't have done that. So no, logically, I can't blame the CMAs, but emotionally, some people are really gonna do that anyway until there's a solid reason not to. Last question, how can Charlie's legacy best be carried forward? It's been 50 years, and Charlie is still just one of a handful of black country singers who's enjoyed some sort of mainstream success. That's really shameful. Recognizing your role in boxing out black artists and Latino artists is really hard, but essential in creating change. The talent is there. We've just created this system that doesn't allow anyone who doesn't look like artists who are already succeeding to penetrate it. So I think that beyond Jimmy Allen and Darius Rucker, go actively find a new favorite artist. Mickey Guyton is one name we've heard a lot in 2020. Willie Jones, Breland is a tremendous talent. Priscilla Renee is a voice that you absolutely need to hear to believe she is so special. So lean in, advocate in a way that you really feel comfortable, and then find something that makes you feel a little uncomfortable, puts you on edge, and then lean into that as well. We can't just welcome black artists into the room once they've arrived anymore. At this point, we need to be actively holding that door open and introducing them to our friends. Completely agree. Couldn't have said it better. Thanks, Billy. I'm Addison Hager for Taste of Country. Thanks for watching, and as always, thanks for subscribing.